This time of the year, we celebrate the good news of graduations all over the world. The world is ripe right now with people getting their degrees, getting their certificates, getting their diplomas. With social media, we get to see loads and loads of pictures of folks who are so excited, so happy that they are someone or someone they love is graduating. With people dressing up and traveling, driving, getting on planes, and sitting in bleachers to celebrate this momentous occasion of graduation. It is a glorious and wonderful time. These times convey the good news that if one works and applies oneself, one can achieve. The sermonic theme for today is the call to great news. The call to great news. Of all the celebrations this year, there's one that touched me this week, and it is the story of Elizabeth Bonker. Elizabeth was among five valedictorians at Rollins College in Florida. That means five people qualified to be valedictorian. They had the same GPA. What makes Elizabeth unique is that Elizabeth cannot talk. Since 15 months old, she has been affected by non-speaking autism. But with the use of text-to-speech software and the confidence of her classmates who thought she should be the one to give the valedictorian speech, Elizabeth Bonkers was able to speak at her graduation. Here are some of her, her words. Today we celebrate our shared achievement. I know something about shared achievements because I am affected by a form of autism that doesn't allow me to speak. My neurotransmitter also permit, per, prevents me from tying my shoes or buttoning my shirt without assistance. I typed this speech with one finger with a communication partner holding the keyboard down. I am one of the few lucky non-talking autistics that has, that has been taught to type. That one critical intervention unlocked my mind from its solid cage, allowing me to learn and be educated like my hero, Helen Keller. Rollins Class 2022, today we celebrate our shared achievements. Rollins has shown us how sharing gives meaning to life. During my freshman year, I remember hearing a story about our favorite alumni, Mr. Rogers. When he died, they found a handwritten note inside of his pockets that was written on it that said, life is for service. The examples are too numerous to list here today, but service to others gives meaning to our lives and to those we serve. Victor Frankhold wrote about the power of sharing in his book, Man's Search for Meaning. While suffering in the Nazi concentration camps at Auschwitz, he noted how despite the horror, there were prisoners that shared their last crust of bread. He writes, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing that can last of the human freedoms is choosing one's attitude in any given circumstance, choosing one's own way. I have struggled my whole life with not being accepted or heard. The local newspaper reported how the principal at my high school told a staff member, the retard cannot be valedictorian. Yet today, here I stand. Each day I choose to celebrate small victories, and today I am celebrating a big victory with all of you. The fundamental right to choose our own way is a right for all of us, and it's worth defending for every human being. We have been doing a series of God's call on our lives. Imagine, I imagine that each of us has a distinct call of God on our lives. But as a community of faith, as United Church of High Park, I think there's a more general call to us as a body, as a followers of Christ. And today in the biblical text, we are reminded that this call, this call to share great news is a great call. 
to be spokesperson of God's redemptive power. That's, that's a humongous call. To be mindful of the words that flow out of our mouth. Elizabeth reminds us of the power of voice simply because she does not have the voice to speak. Lydia in the biblical text today was someone who listened to the good news, who listened to great news and responded. Last week, Peter found himself among a different ethnicity. And this week, Paul finds himself among women. This woman heard the words of the Lord as spoken from Paul's lips. The Lord opened her heart. The text says she listened eagerly. I can only imagine, since it doesn't tell us, that Paul spoke some great news. I can only imagine, since the text doesn't tell us what was said, Paul sharing the love of Christ with her. I can only imagine Paul affirming her worth and dignity. I imagine Paul sharing his own coming to Jesus testimony. All I know is that which comes next, that her heart is open, that the ball goes in the hoop, and that what comes from the heart reaches another, hunk, another heart, slam dunk. And something about what he was saying touched this woman's heart, Lydia. It not only touched her heart, but she gets her whole family baptized. Good news, great news, is not just the property of the rich or the famous or world powers. Great news is not the property of certain religions. Great, great news is not just for certain ethnic groups. Great news is not just for white, heterosexual, cisgendered men. Great news is for everyone. Great news, good news is for everyone. Good news is for Elizabeth. Good news is for Lydia. Good news is for you, for folks who cannot hear, for hearts that are closed, for minds that have been on extended vacations way too long for smelly folks, for folks running from the IRS, and for folks whose dreams have sat in the sun too long. Great news is for everyone, everyone, everyone. That includes us, that includes you. Paul couldn't go to other places, not there, Paul, not there, Paul, not there, Paul, but God's spirit and God's vision led him here. Good news, great news, it's for everyone. Everyone, everybody needs to hear great news from time to time. Actually, I think people need to hear great news a lot to counter what we are facing today. They need to hear it now. I was reading this story about a man fixing a meal for a homeless man. He actually paid a taxi to pick up this homeless man and carry him to his house and not without one word, this man serves up a meal for the homeless guy, and the homeless guy doesn't say a word. He piles the food on, and the homeless man eats the food without ever looking up, without ever saying a word. He eats everything on the plate. And so the guy that is not homeless thinks, oh, this must be a sign that he wants more food. He serves him a second helping. And the man, again, without saying one word, repeats the same act. No words, just pushing the food in his mouth as fast as it could go. I believe folks are starving. They're hungry for great news. Folks are really hungry to hear great news. Folks are starving for hope. Folks are starving for love. And folks are ready for first and seconds if we will use our voice. Let us never underestimate the power of our voice to share great news. Ministry is not a solo endeavor. I am because we are, we are because. We need everyone's voice to spread the great news. We do not know where great news will land. Have you ever looked at people passing out flyers <laughs> and after they pass them out, there's loads of them laying on the ground. Great news may be just laying on the ground. But we also know that there are Lydia's and folks who are desperate to hear great news. It may be even us if we're honest with ourselves. Their hearts were open. Lydia and Elizabeth, their lives are torn. Their hearts are dashed and their lives are incomplete. There are people out there that need, they need great news. 
They need great news. They need great news now. So I want to end here today with the ending of, Elizabeth, of Elizabeth's commencement speech because quite frankly, she says what I would say better than, than I might say it. I have a dream, just like Martin Luther King. This is Elizabeth talking. <laughs> Communication for all. There are 31 million non-speakers with autism in the world, and they are locked in a silent cage. My life will be dedicated to relive, to relieve them from suffering in silence and to give them voices to choose their own way. But how will you, how will you good people rise up to meet the unprecedented challenges of our time, of the days that sit before us? Whatever our life choices, each of us can live a life of service and the world cannot wait for our light to shine. My call to action is simple. Tear off a small piece of paper on your bulletin and write these words. Life is for service. Let's start a new tradition. Post it on social media and then put it in your pocket with all those other things. Come on, women. You know you'll find it one day when you're going in your purse. We are all called to serve, to see the worth in every person we serve, to strive to follow the example of those who chose to serve their last piece of bread. God gave you a voice to use and note the irony, the irony of a non-speaking autistic is not lost on me. Because if you can see the worth in me standing before you, you can see the worth in everyone you meet. So united, let us go and spread some great news. Give someone your last piece of bread. Choose your attitude. Choose your way. And share, share absolutely positively, distinctively, great, good news. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, there is this saying that stick and stones may break, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. We know as God's people that words are powerful and that words can hurt, but that words can do something else. They can build people up. They can encourage people. They can inspire people. They can do so many things. And so, Lord, remind us in all of these calls on our life, the call on the community in Acts, as well as the call here to us, is a call to share great news to be mindful of what we say, to remember that the voice is very powerful and that as much as possible, we are led by your spirit to speak absolutely great news. Continue to be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.